The recovery system is perhaps the most important part of any rocket, and the centerpiece of a recovery system is the parachute. Hemispherical or round parachutes are probably the type you're most familiar with. I use them on my rockets, NASA uses them to bring astronauts back from space, and the military even uses them to land cargo and paratroopers. But wait a minute, that last parachute wasn't round. That's a cruciform parachute, named after the shape of the fabric when it's laid out flat. It forms a cross. They have several potential benefits over round parachutes, especially for my use. Although one of the uses and why the military mainly uses them is they're potentially more stable, the big thing for me is that they're a lot easier to build. Rather than having to sew a bunch of different seams and cut out complicated shapes, it's just a simple cross and then sewing the corners together and then shroud line attachment points. All of this is only theoretical though, and we need to do some real world testing. I devised a three phase plan to test which type of parachute is actually better. The first phase would be dropping the parachutes from high places to get a baseline descent rate for both of them and see if cruciform parachutes are even worth looking into. If they are a lot worse than round parachutes for creating drag, it's not worth the trade-offs. The second phase would be flight testing an existing parachute I already had as a passive payload on a rocket. The rocket would still recover under a normal round parachute like I've flown before to make sure it's safe. The cruciform parachute would be ejected out the side and recover its own little payload. The final phase would be testing a purpose-made nylon cruciform parachute to recover the rocket itself to put all the stuff I've learned together, testing descent rate and packing methods to make sure it really works. For the first phase, I dropped it from our, a high place in our garage. I filmed some video of it to later analyze and recorded time. Although the cruciform parachute does have a slightly higher descent rate, this is because it's actually slightly smaller by surface area. And so if we account for that, they actually are very similar. I also tested these parachutes by suspending them above some fans and kind of holding them in place and seeing how much weight they could lift. They both lifted very similar weights. Again, the cruciform parachute lifted slightly less, but it was about 90%, which is the surface area difference. With these first tests done, it seems pretty clear that cruciform parachutes are pretty comparable to round ones as far as drag. So, it's time to flight test them. I had this trash bag parachute already, and I attached the onboard camera to a little cardboard mount with a washer on the back to increase the weight a little bit more. I packed this in the parachute bay with the main parachute and had them both eject in flight. I also have this little turtle guide that I put in the nose cone just as a fun little passenger. The cruciform parachute and onboard camera were packed behind the main parachute in the parachute bay. And so when the main parachute came out, the cruciform parachute and camera stuck in the bay until the main opened. And by that point, they didn't have enough time to inflate before reaching the ground. On the second two flights, however, they did come out at Apogee like intended, and both inflated very nicely before reaching the ground. Open. That was better, sort of. You can see the cruciform parachute actually inflates quite a bit faster. This is mainly because I didn't wrap lines around the outside like I did with the main parachute. With these flights out of the way, it was time to start working on the phase 3 nylon parachute. I started by marking out the general shape on the piece of fabric I was planning on using. Once that was done, I used electric scissors to cut it out. The fabric is really thin and regular scissors can't cut it very well, but electric scissors work a treat to really easily cut through it all. After it was all cut out, I sew sewed on the shroud line attachment points. These are these little blue bits I'm sewing on. These are where the lines will attach to connect it to the rocket. Finally, I sewed the corners. The corners were first sewed with little tabs I included, 
to get everything attached and lined up. I then went back and reinforced them with some thicker blue ripstop nylon that adds a lot of strength. Once the parachute was fully made, I decided to do some quick tests in the yard. I started by kind of throwing it in the air, and that's when I started to notice a problem. It was doing this thing I call sausaging, where it fully unravels but stays in kind of a sausage shape, hence the name, and doesn't fully inflate. This is really annoying because it can often lead to the rocket crashing, because the parachute really doesn't provide any drag in this state. In order to do some more testing on this, I built a drop tower. This took a couple iterations to get right, but I started with a light pole we used to use to put up Christmas lights, and strung some string to it to hoist the parachute into the air. This worked pretty well, but it wasn't held up very well on our deck, and I later switched to a large 20 foot long piece of PVC pipe. After some tweaking, I was able to hoist the parachute up and then release it reliably. The release mechanism on this consists just of a bolt with a rubber band wrapped around it that can be pulled off by a string from the ground. At first, the parachute was still having the sausage problem, even from the pole. What turned out to be the problem was my packing method. At first I was using this method where I would lay the parachute out really flat and then fold in the corners to the middle. It seems like this was too flat and the edges would stick together and not open properly and let air in. I later discovered that I could just pull the shroud lines into the middle and then treat the corners like they also had shroud lines and pull them into the middle and that would open much better. I confirmed this with a couple drops from the drop tower which showed that it worked very well, opening quite quickly. Now that I have a reliable way of packing these parachutes, it's time to go test it in flight on an actual rocket, recovering the rocket itself. So I packed up the rocket and all the stuff and headed out to the launch site. On that first flight, everything worked pretty much perfectly. The rocket flew nice and high, and the flight computer deployed the parachute right at Apogee, and it came out super quick. The turtle didn't deploy, but at least nothing broke. So we set it up again for a second flight. On that flight, things went less well. It appears that the parachute kind of got stuck in the parachute bit. This may be that the turtle and its parachute kind of got stuck and the main parachute was stuck with it and neither of them had enough force to get out. It's kind of hard to tell. Whatever the cause was, it seems like it wasn't something to do with the parachute itself. And because I have the drop tower data as well as t that first test, this makes me confident in the cruciform parachute. So what's the answer? Is the cruciform parachute better? Well, it's not better in all cases, but for me it is a lot better because it has very similar performance and is much easier to build than a round parachute. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.